In this box is obvious tool codes, brand new ultralight nail belt. I'm super excited to try this belt out. We'll open up the box, we'll set up the nail belt and try it on, load it with tools and have a good feel on how the nail belt is. All right, so first up, we've got the belt here. Now this belt is quite similar to Buckaroo's design in that it's actually got the two belts. I know a few brands do do it this way. We've got the first belt that goes around your waist. Now the second belt is what we put the pouches on. What I'm gonna do is loosen this and open up that second belt. And you can see this pulls through. And we can pull it all the way out. And when we come over to the pouches, we can see we've got this loop in the top of the pouch. And we can slide the second belt through that loop. And when we connect it together, that's how the pouches get connected to the belt. And that's also how you can customize which way you want your pouches. This first pouch here, this is the dominant pouch. Depending if you're left-handed or right-handed, your dominant pouch will be slightly different. You can order it both ways. It is customizable depending on which hand you use. We can see here we've got a leather sleeve and this is for our hammers to go into. So it comes with this PVC pipe in there. And the reason for that is you get rid of it straight away. I can throw it away now. So that just bounced into the box. But over time, leather change, changes its shape depending on if it's been stretched or what's getting put in the leather. It comes with that PVC pipe, so when it gets posted, it doesn't get compacted flat. And off the bat, it isn't hard to get your hammer in there and it should easily slide in. That's perfect. That sits in there quite well. Now this is something I do want to try out. I'm interested to put the belt on and we'll go further into this when the belt is on. But the belt I have been using hasn't had a sheath for the hammer to go into. It's just had a ring. Now a ring is always going to be easier for putting your hammer in and taking it out. The downside though is that your hammer can actually move around beside your body. I think we've all had those instances where your hammer will swing and hit you against the leg. Or even if you're working inside, there's a chance your hammer can swing and hit walls and doorways if you're squeezing through tight places. We'll look further into this in just a minute. That sheath for the hammer is the largest bit of leather you'll find on this nail belt. It is called the lightweight nail belt and it is aspiring to be a lightweight small nail belt to use. The only reason the leather is used for the hammer is from what I said before, it does hold its shape and it will kind of mold its shape depending on what tool you use, what hammer you use. The only reason we have the leather for the hammer sheath is it does hold its shape better than nylon. It does stay open so you can put your hammer in there. The hammer holster is leather. Leather does weigh more than the nylon. And for a lightweight purpose, you want to try to take down as much of that weight as possible. And the only reason they did stick with the leather hammer holster is just because it's a lot easier to slide a hammer in and out against leather. The nylon has a bit more grip and you do feel a bit more drag when you're trying to pull your hammer in and out. The nylon they use for these pouches, I'm just going to read it here. This is 1000 Denier Cordura nylon. This type of nylon is a premium type of nylon that has been used and tested in the tool belt industry. It's the exact same type of nylon that you'll find on Diamondback and Badger nail belts. It's been tested. We all know how good this nylon is. We can see on the top of the pouches too, there's a bit of a leather trim just in the tops, making the nail belt a bit more durable. We'll go into all the slots and what we can use it for in a second when I actually set the nail belt up. But this is the other pouch it comes with. So this is a non-dominant pouch, which will be used on my left hand side. One cool thing I've noticed straight away is at the back we have another leather sheath. Now this one isn't for your hammer. You wouldn't ever use two hammers or have a hammer on your non-dominant side. Looking at it too, I don't think you'd even get a hammer in there. It's a bit smaller. This is more designed for a chicken's foot. I mean, that's what I call this anyway. It's probably more commonly known as a nail puller. So that just slides in the back there. <laughs> you won't even see that it's there. It hides in really well behind the nail belt. And you can see we've got the claw where we can easily just slide it out if we need to use it. It's cool to have that feature there. This being a lightweight nail belt, if you are pretty cautious about how much weight you're holding, you may choose not to put that in there. But if you watch any of my videos framing out my toolboxes or framing out a van, I love making the most use as possible out of space. So having this hidden at the back there, using that back side of the nail belt is a huge win in my eyes. So coming around to the front of the nail belt, the first thing at the top here is we can see where the obvious tool co-branding is. This is a tape holder. Now I've got a tape here to try this out, but the reason this is made out of leather is for that same reason that leather actually can expand and move over time. So I've got an eight meter tape that sits in there quite well. That's also with the clip on the side too, which makes it a bit tighter, but that does sit in there okay. For instance, if you did have a 10 meter tape, that tape that's a little bit bigger, those first few times, it might be a little bit more tight trying to put the tape in there, but I have been told that over time this will expand and it does suit 10 meter tapes really well as well. So we'll get into all the pouches deeply when we start filling out the nail belt with tools. If we have a look on the inside there, it's not just one big pouch, we've got heaps of different compartments to store different tools, which is awesome. That's one of the best things about these nail belts. Obviously the first selling point is that it's lightweight. 
And the second is that everything's just organized. There's slots for your tools, so everything doesn't just fall together in that one compartment. And the other thing which is really good is that there's been a lot of thoughts going into on what side of your body your tools are. For example, my buckaroo now about right now, I've got a little slot, I'll, I'll go get it. I've got this slot on the side where my chisel and hammer sits. And this is that ring I was talking about before, how it's easier to get the hammer in there. But you can see that hammer moves around, it can knock stuff. Anyway, we're not talking about that for now. What I wanna talk about is how whenever you wanna use a chisel, you're more than likely gonna be using a chisel and a hammer together. These are two tools that you will use at the same time and you need them for different hands. You're reaching across your body or you're trying to pass tools over from one hand to another if they're both on the same side. This is something obvious Toolco have thought about when making these dowel belts. They've made it so your hammer's on one side and your chisel's on the other. So you can actually pull out both tools you need at once with both hands. And that's the same as your tape measure and your pencil. My tape measure will be on my left hand side, pencil will be on my right. And I can pull them both out at the same time when I, need, when I need to use those tools together. The other cool thing I just want to go over quickly before we put the spout together is we've got this small little pocket here which we can actually pull out. I do want to point out that that clip is quite tight and even though this does come out from the nail belt, you can see how much pressure it takes to put it on and off. I don't think you're just going to knock that off from walking through trusses. You can see I'm trying to hold that upside down and hit it. It fell off at the end there, but I had to hit it a few times and, and do a bit of pressure to actually knock this off. But what's so good about this is if you were doing a deck job, for example, you could load this up with screws, clip this pouch alone onto your pants, onto your belt. You don't have to wear your nail belt, and typically you're just gonna be walking over doing a deck. All you need is your screws and you have your drill and driver in front of you. And you can just not worry about having the weight of your entire nail belt. I'm not sure if it's coming up on the video, but I'm actually pretty drenched right now. We just finished work for the day, and this is where we're working. About 30 degrees today, I'm <laughs> dripping from sweat while making this video. We're just in the pool, and I don't know if the exposure's showing you, but the beach is right down there, where you can see past all those trees. It's one of the perks of working in Australia. All right, we'll quickly put all the pouches together. We can also see here, these clips here, they go upwards. These are for the suspenders. I do have the suspenders and I may as well try them on later too. We'll have a look at the suspenders as well with this nail belt. To know which way it goes, we'll keep those clips up and pretend to have the nail belt on. And obviously this side here, this left side is gonna be my non-dominant side and the right's gonna be my dominant. So I'm gonna slide through this non-dominant pouch first. You can see that loop in there. We're just gonna slide this through. I'm gonna make sure we thread the belt through these little straps here. And what that does is that locks that pouch off in that little compartment and it stops it from moving around and slide into the back of the belt. And for my dominant side, let's slide this in. And we just thread the end of the strap through here too to tie that off. That's the setup complete and I'm actually pretty keen now. Let's try this belt on for the first time. I actually got pretty lucky there with the size. I've ordered it to my size, but we can play around with the sizing of the belt here too. Straight up, this feels really comfortable. It feels light, as you should expect. I've got no tools in it anyway. I can notice the thick padding around my hips. That does feel really good too. It feels quite comfy, and I, I do like the way it sits. The very first impression is really great with this belt. But I mean, nothing really matters though until we load it with tools. So let's go by one by one. I'm gonna start loading this up with my tools, and we'll talk through the placements and the designated slots for where all these tools go. So we touched on this a little bit before, but the first thing I want to put in is the hammer and we can see that's actually quite easy to put in and out when I got my diamond back now about they've got a similar design with the sheath but instead of using the leather they had the nylon instead and it was really tight I actually did struggle trying to play around open it up and putting the hammer in maybe it's just because these got shipped out with that PVC pipe in them but that's made a word of difference that's easy to pull in and out and I don't have any nylon to compare them to but I can say that the hammer does come out quite easily with little resistance the second thing I'm noticing right now is just swinging my waist around and moving that nail about it's quiet. I'm just gonna refer to the buckaroo just because it's the one nail belt I've got here. But these metal rings, which are found on so many different nail belts, you put your hammer in, you got a bit of noise there. And I'm just gonna shake it, and you can see that metal ring on the metal hammer 
that makes noise when you move around. Don't get me wrong, that is not important at all. Of course, on a construction site, a little rattling noise is not going to be an issue at all. It's just something that I actually just noticed straight away, and it feels it feels weird how quiet that is. While we're here, I'm going to focus on this dominant side pouch, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six different slots that can fit tools. Actually, that's something else I want to note. That sticks out a fair bit, and I actually can't push that in. I think that leather ring around the top actually helps for hold that shape as well, which is good. It makes me think that tools should slide in and out quite easily. I like that. I really do like that. One thing I do want to note is whenever I get a new nail belt, I'm sure a lot of you can relate, everything feels a bit weird. You get into such a good habit of where your tools are and you always know where to reach for your tools and put your tools away. Trying to change to a new nail belt, it takes a good week to really get used to the new setup. Because of that, I'm not just going to freely put tools where I want to put them. I'm going to refer to the photos that Obvious Tool Co have posted with these nail belts filled up. And I'm just going to try out that setup. I'm going to put tools where they've put their tools and feel how that goes. I'm sure over time I will customize a few things where I put my tools. But for now, we'll set it up how they have it and see how that feels. I've just jumped around to the side of the house and I want to do a special note on how awesome this cladding is. I've been working on this job today, but I didn't install this cladding. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's a shiplap design, but they've actually gone through and burnt the timber to give this look. This isn't some texture, it isn't some composite timber or anything. This is proper timber that's been burnt and turned into some type of ash look. It looks great for starters and I'm not too familiar with this, but I'm presuming it's also here because we're so close to the beach and it's gonna last a bit longer than just staining timber boards. In saying that, I think next year I've got a job coming up where we'll be using this same material. So I'll definitely have to do a video and look more into this stuff then. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Let's get back to the belt. So start with this biggest slot at the back. That's perfect, yeah, for the pincers to sit in there. That's quite a snug fit. This is a tool that you probably won't be using a lot, but it's really useful when you need it. So I think having its own pouch there where it's secure, it's out of the way is great. I'm probably gonna keep coming back to the same thing. I'm old now about had more larger pouches where you'd have a collection of a few tools in at once. That means if I wanted to grab a rack of nails and my speed square or something else, I'd be accidentally, I'd be fishing through my pincers and other tools in there just to get that one tool out. So having this own slot for the tool means I'm not gonna ruffle through it to try to get other things. And also I'm probably more likely to keep it on me. It's not gonna get in the way, so I'm more likely to actually keep it in my nail belt and it will be there on me when I do need it. So after that, we've got this other pouch that follows that shape around. And we can put our knife in there, on one side at least, and that holds quite securely in there. And the other thing they used it for was a fourfold ruler. I'm gonna play around. I can put them in there quite securely like that. That could be something I might find myself playing around with because that ruler sticks away from me just ever so slightly. You can see we got the smallest gap in there. I'm being picky right now. I'm looking for stuff to say. I don't know if it'd be a problem, but I could potentially knock my arm across that when I'm moving. This could be one of those small things I play around with and just even, even like that, just change the position of the roller and the pincers. You can already see playing around with that, I can kind of customize it how I want. Obviously this way, when I use the pincers, I'm gonna to have to pull them out and turn them around because the handle's not exposed, but it, stops it, but it stops the roller just being that little bit out from my body and being something I could potentially knock. And we've just got four small slots here where you can throw your pencils in, your markers in, your pens in, just anything like that. You can even put a few drill bits in there if you want it. That's pretty That's pretty self-explanatory. Now the non-dominant side, this is what I'm more excited for just because I'm pretty impressed with the amount of slots in here. So we did touch on this before, but the first thing is this nail puller. It sits in there quite well. I'm gonna forget that's there. I don't really carry, I've never really carried a nail puller on me. There are times where it does become really useful. The only reason I don't carry it on me is because it just gets in the way of all the other tools. Having that slot for it to sit in there, I'm gonna forget it's there. Well, hopefully I don't forget it's there when I go to use it. But just on the day-to-day -day purpose, it's out of the way. I'm not gonna notice it. That's perfect. And the other thing I did touch on too, is we do have our tape measure holder at the top there. So we'll chuck our tape in. I'm coming from a design where my tape was at the back of my nail belt. So this is gonna be one of those things that will take a minute to get used to. But as I did touch on before, I can just pull my tape and pencil out together now. Grab them with one hand each tape and pencil out and I can just open up my tape and mark straight away. So I'm just going to spin this belt around just so you can see it a bit easier. I'll have to come through and do a few close-ups on this too. In this main section there's a lot going on. We got this tight wider area at the back and that'll be perfect just to keep my speed square in there. It's good that it's got its own compartment. The only downside I can see is you do have to kind of lean it out to get around the tape. If your nail belt is completely filled, overloaded with nails, I could see it being a bit of a squeeze to squeeze it out through there. On the other side of this big pouch, we've got three separate compartments. You can see I've got my tin sips right now. We can put our tin sips in one of those. I've got a small level on me. 
That can, can that fit in the middle? Yeah, that fits nicely in the middle. And I suppose this is just one where you can play around with what tools you want. For example, I can also fit a bevel in there. And I suppose in this instance, I can always chop and change if I want my ruler in that pouch, if I want a bevel in this pouch. So one of the, I think this is probably one of the coolest things about this bout. I'm really keen to try this out. I think this could be a game changer in itself is we've got these little sleeves where we can put our drill bits in. Now spade bits, they're gonna work perfectly for this. I can slide them in there and since the head's a bit wider, they're definitely not gonna go through. One thing I'm actually loving is that it's not super easy to get them in there. You do you do kind of need to use a drill bit to open up that fabric to get them in the sleeve. That's good, that's a, that's a positive thing I reckon because if it was loose, your drill bits are just gonna fall through that and the same thing's gonna happen that happens with every other nail bout. You're just gonna have a collection of drill bits and impacted bits just in the bottom of your nail bout which you're fishing through to get out. So I've just got a few impacted bits too. I'm gonna to sit these in here. So still on this big main slot here, we do have that room in the middle where we can put racks of nails or hardware or anything in. So that main bit is quite full right now. One thing I do wanna try is just pulling these nails in and out. I just wanna see if doing this process a few times, if it's gonna knock any of those drill bits and make them fall off, which it doesn't seem like it's doing. Another concern I had with these drill bits in there, mainly the spade bits, is we have the sharp bit sticking up. And obviously that concern is if you're gonna put your hand in your nail belt and get cut. Now that I've actually set it up, I'm a little bit less worried about that. You can see how tight these sleeves are and it actually holds those, it actually holds those spade bits right to the side of the nail belt. So they're not sticking out, you shouldn't cut yourself with them. I, I honestly don't think that's gonna be an issue. I, I do think they're actually quite secure there to the side. I'm just putting my hand in the nail belt straight away. I'm not used to how it's set up already and just trying to grab hardware in and out. I think we're good. I don't think those drill bits will be an issue. Looking at the slot at the front here too, it is divided into two little sections. So this back section is actually probably more ideal to put your framers in anyway. And then this front section we can use for decking screws for anything. I've also got my chalk line here too, so that's probably a perfect housing place to put the chalk line in there. And what that does is that also frees up this main section here. So if I was doing a deck and I was running this setup with all my tools in here, I could take my chalk line out of there and sit it in this main section and use that for screws. I might even run the nail belt with my chalk line in this main section. You can see on this nail belt too, we do have a section here where I can chuck my knife and pencils. I just realized with this setup, I don't have my chisel in here yet. And one thing I found on the ground, this fell out of the box, but every single one of obvious tool goes, come with this plastic sheath for your chisels. Now this is a good idea because I've seen countless nail belts, whether or not it's leather or nylon, they've both done it and they've split open over time where the chisel goes in. Your chisel is gonna go in and if it's a sharp chisel, every time you're walking around, that chisel will be bouncing around moving and it's just pressing against that leather or that nylon and that's how you start to get your nail belts to open up and break and stuff to start falling out. It's gonna pull my shifter out for now and this sheath can sit into one of those pouches. Actually, I'm gonna try it with that middle pouch. Yeah, it actually works perfectly with that middle pouch. So that's the setup of tools. It's pretty awesome how many tools I've got on a nail belt. I've never carried this many tools at once. And that's just because most nail belts I've used only have a few larger compartments. And as soon as you put two or three tools in that same compartment, whatever tool you're using the most, you'll keep grabbing that tool out and everything will get stuck in the way or they'll come out at the same time. And it does my head in. So we can see though, a lot of the weight is on the left-hand side. I can feel that. I can feel the weight going to the left-hand side. But that's why we got the suspenders. We're gonna chuck them on right now and have a look at the suspenders. I always recommend wearing suspenders, even if you don't think the weight's too heavy and you're comfortable walking around with it. It's gonna damage your body over time. The only time I don't wear suspenders, and I've seen people wear suspenders doing this and they never will again. But that's if you got your top off on the frame. <laughs> I've worked with people that have had suspenders on, looking after their body, and what happens is, as you can imagine, they get burnt or tanned, and they've got these white lines going down the body where the suspenders were. Never do that. These are the suspenders. This is the first look of them. It already feels like there's a fair bit of padding and support in these suspenders. These are made out of nylon too, and a good thing about the nylon is that it is a breathable material. If it's a hot day and you've got these suspenders going down over your body, you can't have something heavy like leather. It's just gonna trap in the sweat, trap in the heat. A nice, lightweight, breathable material like this nylon is perfect. I already like how easy this this is gonna to be to attach the suspenders. We can see we just got these clips for the back. I'm just gonna clip them on like that. And that's secure. And then for the front, we just clip them on to these front clips there. And that's done. If you were to work in summer and you did take your top off, the fact that you can clip off it on these suspenders so easily is a bonus.
I'm just gonna use my Buckaroo for example right now. Once again, this video isn't a comparison at all. I'm just using this belt because I do have it here. But I've seen the same design with a lot of suspenders, but we've actually got a strap, which we've got to thread through the loop and then tighten. So it's just a bit more of a process if you wanna take it off and put it on. And that also means every time you take it off and put it on, you have to readjust your suspenders and readjust the strap to get the right height. Oh, I'm just gonna put it on for the first time now. I'm gonna strap that up and let's strap up this belt at the bottom. We can see I've done the nail belt up now. There's no way to my shoulders. I do have to play around. I do need to play around a little bit to get these tight. So let's just thread some of this through. Now with the suspenders, I don't like setting them up so all the weight's on the shoulders. I try to find that balance so it's still tight around the waist and I'm carrying a bit of the weight with my waist. And then with my shoulders, I'm also carrying a bit of it. And saying that, depending what you're doing, if I'm reaching up, the weight will get transferred to my shoulders depending how my body's moving and what I'm doing. So obviously this is just the first look of it. I haven't used it on site yet. And I do want to give it a few weeks or a few months to be using it every day. And then I can work out how great this now about is. In saying that though, it's gonna have competition. In this box, we do have obvious tool codes, the first of a nail belt, and that's a framing nail belt. We'll get into that shortly. I'll be posting a separate review quite soon. So I'll do the same video on that nail belt. We'll do the first glance, go over everything, what tools it can hold, how it feels, a placement of everything. And over the next few months, I'm gonna film a lot of videos at work doing various tasks. And during those videos, I'm gonna be using these nail belts and we're gonna get a bit of a deeper look on how practical and how much I really do like these belts. I almost just forgot, I put these suspenders on, I got carried away talking about so many different things. But we do have pencil slots on the suspenders as well. Now this is another cool thing where we just got the options of where I wanna put my pencils. I've got so many options for my pencil placement right now. Personally, I probably do like it being here where we had it to start with. That's just right next to my hand. It's easy to grab on the way through. As I did say before though, with anything, if it's toolboxes or tool belts, I love having as many options as possible to put things. So even though I'm putting my pencil here right now, I love having the option to chuck it there. And it is something I'm gonna play around with and put it in both of the two slots and see if there's any applications where I do prefer having the pencil here on my suspenders. 